Hello and welcome back to AC's Make and Repair. Well, I've had several questions asked about um, the jig that I use or the machine I use to scoop the bowls out on my wooden spoons. Um, some time ago I did a, a video on how to make wooden spoons and I made this little machine up that scoops the bowl out on uh, the wooden spoon. Of course you cut this out and the handle is up here. This is just the bowl part that just scallops out. Of course, you know if you do it by hand, it's quite time consuming. Then you've got to sand it off and finish it. So I made this tool up and just using an angle grinder and a, a cutting disc. I'll try to get in there and show you what that disc looks like. Just one second. So here's the disc. It's just a, this is actually about, I'll just tell you exactly how big in diameter it was. It's about uh, 65 millimeters or two and a half inches in diameter, roughly. And I got it as a set of three. I've got um, this disc here as well. It's about a 90 millimeter disc or 100 millimeters disc thereabouts, and this other disc too. In the set, they weren't that dear. I bought them online, and um, so I put one on this old grinder that I had. Didn't have a guard on it, but I don't put my fingers anywhere near this. That's for sure. You set it up. Your hands are well clear, but it's relatively safe to use, uh, especially if you apply uh, common sense like you should. So today what I'm going to do is just actually pull it to pieces and describe how I built it. And there is something I'm going to modify, and that's actually on the side here. Um, if you see this little bolt here, and I'll just move it across, this little bolt here, uh, my rise and fall part of the mechanism is in accordance to the head of this bolt. This little arm lifts it up and it slides this up and down. See this part here moves up and down? This arm here when I wind my adjustment handle up and down to lower the cutter deeper into the spoon bowl, it actually rides on this head of the bolt. And the, the head of the bolt's wearing a little bit of a groove in this timber here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna machine some little bushes up that go on another bolt and I'm gonna modify it a bit. But before I do that, I'm going to pull it to pieces and show you how I made it. I'll do a bit of an overview of it here now, and then I'll pull it to pieces. Okay, so looking from a distance, it just basically has two towers with a slot uh, in it, which goes up and down. So this lifts the grinder up and down, this little arm here. And look, look literally, I put this together in probably about half an hour. Um, and then I added this little wind up handle on it as an extra later took me about 10 minutes to do that or something later it's just a bit of threaded rod here it's about a bit of 5 16 threaded rod or something like that it is and I put it together just to see if it would work and lo and behold it worked well so I was really impressed with it so I'll just show you how I made it how I made the bracket to hold onto the grinder uh, of course it'll probably have to vary a little tiny bit with your grinder it uh, might mount the same way but you might be able to use different other spots on your grinder to mount the same thing. So come along with me and I'll try to explain it as I go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to describe to you is the grinder part of it. Now, I initially uh, was going to use a bracket to hold the grinder. Uh, this was the bracket and I modified this bracket since. And it had another tab like this on this other side here. And I actually was going to clamp it on the back here with two radiator clamps. But what I found is once I clamped the radiator clamps tight around the outside of the grinder, it actually uh, affected the motor running. It actually clamped down on the field windings and it didn't run properly at all. Maybe it was something to do with the steel clamps or something, I don't know. So then I decided to use the mounting bolts that mount the gearbox uh, to the, the housing here. And they're fairly long screws, and because it doesn't have any side screws. Now I'll explain that. On a Makita grinder, it's got these bolt holes here, which you could quite easily use to mount. Because um, they're nice and square and parallel, some, some are on an angle. They, they wouldn't be easy to mount, but these Makita ones are nice and square. You could use those bolt holes quite good. But I had this old uh, grinder here. And it was lying around and it was ideal for this particular job. So I used what I had. 
So what I did is I used a bit of sea purloin, 100 mil, uh, millimeter sea purloin or 4 inch sea purloin, uh, and it literally worked the job a treat. I actually ground it out to suit the housing here, and then I drilled the two holes in correlation with the, the gearbox mount. I'll just bring that up closer. There you go. You can see the two mounting bolts or screws there. And look, it is amply strong enough. I would recommend if you had a, a, a grinder with these side bolts, that would possibly be stronger. And the other benefit of that is too, uh, the pendulum would be closer to the edge of the disc. And by that I mean the further up you go, the longer swoop it makes. Um, so the pivot point is crucial. In this case, the pivot point's probably, I'll tell you, exactly, and this one works quite fine. Uh, wouldn't hurt if it was a little bit narrow. I could put another set of holes in here which would make it better, but the pivot point is about... Uh, it's about 65 millimeters or two and a half inches from the center spindle of the grinder shaft here. So about from there to about here is about 65 millimeters. So that works quite good. So once I'd made the bracket, I then had to make a baseboard and these towers uh, that aid in the rising and falling of the grinder in the, um, the jig, basically. So I knew the width of this was 100, its outside width was 102 millimetres or just over about 4 inches in width. But I didn't want it a snug tight fit because I wanted this to be able to pivot quite freely like that as it was used. So I had this off cut of timber. It's actually off the bottom of a door. Um, it's a, a off cut off the bottom of a door. It was a solid pine block door with two sheets of ply this side. It was a sandwich piece. <laughs> Not that you need that. Um, and uh, like it was about an inch and a half thick. Or 44, 42 millimeters thick, 40, 42 millimeters thick. And um, so what I did is I made the outside measurement about three millimeters wider on this board. So I had a bit of bit of play in between where it mounts between these two towers. So it wasn't bound or tight. You needed to, to pendulum freely. So then I went on to making the two towers. So because this piece of timber was this long, I just left it that long and it works quite well for what I want. If I wanted to use a bigger disc in it, I could also use the bigger disc. It's wide enough for that. It's not going to be hindered by the towers um, in these two upright pieces. So all I did then is I uh, run a router groove. This is a roughly a quarter inch groove, a little bit over a quarter inch groove uh, with a quarter inch router bit. It went up there, and I was running quarter inch bolts, so it slid up and down. These bolts, I'll show it to you, these slide up and down on that, so it rises and falls like this, sort of basically, the grinder does, with the aid of this other piece that I'll show you in a second. So basically I just mounted these on the side like this, and like I said, it was a quick job, I just slapped it together, just to see if it'd work. Uh, I thought it was my idea, and I later found that other people had done this idea before with using the angle grinders and these, these carving discs. Um, I was quite surprised. I thought, well, there you go, somebody else has done that. So it's not, well, I can't claim to be the first to have done it. But um, this is, the other, the other ones that I've seen aren't identical to mine. I do mine a little bit different way. The way I Make it go up and down is a little bit different. So I'll just screw that back on there now. You could make these out of stronger material. You could make it out of aluminium. You could make it out of steel. All that too. Uh, I chose not to. I didn't think I was going to go into production of making these spoons. I just wanted to do uh, a few off here and there. Uh, I didn't want to do hundreds and hundreds at a time. If I was going to do hundreds, I'd make it totally different probably. Uh, but for just... Doing a few for gifts here and there, this is ample for what that is. Which most of the people out there that are viewing this, you'll probably just want to make a few for gifts. If you want to do it for production, I suggest you make it stronger. I suggest you make it out of more durable materials. But I reckon you could do hundreds on this before it wears down. And then it's just a matter of replacing the bits of timber that are worn. 
and today with the modification I'm doing today I think it will be minimal wear too. So then I'll just go on here now, hang on. So this is the device that rises and falls now. This was just a bit of moulding, uh, just a bit of square scotia moulding. It, uh, nothing, nothing great about it. It's just 42 uh, by 12, I think it was. Yep, roughly inch and a half by 7 16th, roughly. And um, this is pine. It's a bit of uh, 42 by 19 there. And I just screwed it in there literally to get me by. Literally, you could make that a better joint there. Uh, this is doing the job. I recessed a 5 16th nut in here. If you can see. Bring it closer. There you go, just there. I uh, drilled a bit of a hole so the uh, 5 16 nut would tap in tight. I chiseled it out a bit so it's nice and tight. And just, I didn't even glue that in there. That's just sheer gravity holds that, the pressure on that nut, and it's tight in there too. Uh, this is a piece of threaded rod, about 5 16 uh, At the top here, I made a little piece of flat steel, uh, put a nut on either side and lock nutted that on. I've got a better, I think that's a one-eighth screw, uh, a little, little screw bolt that goes through there with a little turn knob and a lock nut on either side of that just to hold it. So that's my rise and fall device and it's just screwed together and it just pivots on a screw. I'll show you that too. It just pivots on a screw back here and I'll put it back together as we go and look I know it's got threads on it should have a blank shank uh, and if I was going to do hundreds I'd, I'd modify that too in fact one day I might just put a bolt through there with a uh, flush shank not a threaded shank and uh, make it work that way so I'll just screw them in there now I didn't do them up uh, dead tight because I want it to move up and down see so I'll do the other side too okay so that's that back and see how that goes up and down like that now if it wasn't free enough I'd probably wax those two sides which I might wax it all a bit before I put it back together now Getting back to the grinder mounting. Grinder I mounted in between like this. Now what I did do, in between where it mounts on the frame, I run some simple flat washers. So that means this full area wasn't in contact with the side of the plywood. Otherwise that would have created friction, it would have been bound up, it wouldn't have pendulumed or pivoted on it, so I put two flat quarter inch flat washers there like that when I mounted it inside like that. I'll do the same thing now. I'll probably uh, I've got some different size flat washers. I'll show you what I've done to modify it. So first thing I've done to modify before the heads of the bolt. This these. These were just uh, roofing bolts or tank bolts as we used to call them. That used to run on its edge on that. So that was too fine, that edge there. So what I did is I had some nylon bushing, some heavy duty nylon plastic bushing. And I actually turned that up on my little lathe. You could make them out of hardwood on your wood lathe. Uh, alternatively, you could use little little bearings too. Probably only cost you 4 or $5 each to buy some little bearings that would go over a quarter bolt. But I had the... Uh, plastic bushing there so I turned them up in the lay that didn't take long to do it all they pivot quite good and I made them the width a little bit wider than the width of my board so now when they go up and down like that they actually ride nice and tight on that edge of the board I'll just zoom in as you can see there they ride nice and um, there's a lot more surface area compared to just that edge now they've got the same width as the timber, basically. This is 10 millimeters wide, the timber's about 11 or 12 millimeters wide. So basically, that's what's riding on the timber now. So it's not gonna wear a groove. Even the groove that's there, this will ride over it. 
So what I'll do now is I'll poke them through and on the inside, actually on the outside too, I'll use one of these little tiny flat washers as a spacer here. So when I mount it through, it'll have the, the washer there. So it's this uh, little bushing that I just made up, the little wheel that I've just made, is not touching the, this tower at all. Only the washer is. And I'm going to make it loose. I'm not going to make it a tight fit. It's going to be a loose fit. It's going to go up and down like that quite freely. It's not super free. It's firm enough. And then on the inside, I have a little bit of heavier washer and a bit of a broader washer. It goes on the inside. So I'll try to get around so you can see that. Okay, so looking from on top, this is the outside bushing. There's a washer behind it. And on the inside, there's going to be this washer here on the inside. Now that bolts, I'll just try to bring it up through here. The washer goes here. And on the inside, I just put a Norlock nut. Uh, so it doesn't come undone. So I don't know what you call them in America or wherever you are, but we call these nylon lock nuts in Australia. They've got a little bit of a nylon. Some people call them a lock nut, but they've got a little bit of nylon there under the staked head on it, and that locks onto the thread so it doesn't come undone. It's just a, a firm uh, clamp around the thread. Okay, so now I'm going to assemble this, and I'll show you how it goes. Um, just bear with me because um, I've only got two hands. So I'll put one bolt through from one side first, like this. And then I'll go through, <coughs> excuse me, from the other side. I'll put the bolt in and then I'll put the washer on it. But before that I'll just put a nut on this side so I can let go of this side. That's it. the washer in there, then I'll slide this up so it's there. I'll get another nut now and I'll fit it to this thread on this bolt. Now I'll just get a couple of spinners to do that up. Okay, so I've got a 7 16 ring spanner in the nut there, and I'm just using a little quarter inch ratchet with a 7 16 socket on it to do up these quarter inch bolts. So do them up. Now I won't do them up really dead tight just yet, and they don't have to be done up dead tight because we need clearance between the side so it doesn't. Um, Clamp it, it needs to slide up and down freely like I was explaining before. So I'll just do this side. Okay, now that, that side is fairly firm. We don't want it really tight. We don't want it to the, the little roller on the outside, that little bit of bushing that I made up. And yeah, we're just going to see if it slides up and down. So this side here I've done up too tight. I need to back it off just a little bit. And we want it to so it goes up and down free, but it's not sloppy. Yeah, that goes up and down free. All right, it's still... Still a fraction tight, actually. There we go. That's pretty well got it. Yeah, that's going up. This side here needs a little bit of a tighten. Yeah, that's not too bad. I think I'll tighten it a little bit tighter than the other side, so I'll loosen it off a whisker. Yep, that's not too bad. 
And bear in mind, um, when I wind this handle here, can you see that handle? Yep. When I wind it up and down, now I'll explain that too. So let's go to the side view here. So basically when I want to lower it down, I undo it. And this, this arm goes down. Now, I didn't put a hole in here because you need that to skid a little bit as it goes along the bottom. And this works ideal. You don't need little, anything fancy. It just moves as its own cord. As it goes down, as I undo it, this lowers down. And these little roller followers, we'll call them, they follow the top of this board. So it lowers it. But it only lowers. So about three turns or four turns on that might only be a sixteenth of an inch or, a, you know, a half a millimetre to a millimetre's lowering. But you don't want to do big cuts uh, in a big go. You just need to do shaves, basically. And look, it doesn't take long to do a bowl uh, in in the, um, the top of that. As I showed at the beginning of the video, didn't take very long at all. It takes probably longer to, to just set it in there uh, with the centre lines, because you've got a line... And what I suggest you, you do is start it off so the, the disc is actually clearing this. So you, let's pretend this is the disc we're using. You want it so the disc clears the board. Okay, and then wind it down just so it touches. And theoretically, this is what the disc is doing every time I rock that grinder. And I'll lower it. So I, I might take a couple of swipes with that lowered position until I feel it's finished cutting then I'll wind this handle down undo it a bit and it'll cut some more and what I find is as I do it I hold pressure on the cut stroke so on the cut stroke I hold pressure downward pressure on the cut stroke and then I'll just lightly let it rock back then as I come through for the cut stroke so the cut stroke would be the, the sharp side of the blade okay but when I want to do the backstroke, or the non-cutting side of the blade, I release the pressure, I, I still hold on to it, but I release the pressure so it gently goes back over, but when I go to do the cut, I hold equal pressure down, so it's pushing on both rollers, so it's equal, and look, it's working fine, I mean, the bowl on that, it's really, really, really good, um, I did a, sa a sample cut first, and I, because I knew the the board was parallel, I put a centre line all the way through and that gave me centre of this and which works in really really good and by the way um, when I cut the spoon out I I sand it to suit that so I, I sand that to suit that if you go back and watch my video you'll see how I make the spoon to suit that Roughly marking it out. So I go sort of equal distance. I don't know if you can see that all the way around. Then of course I junction into my handle here. And I finish the spoon the way I did them. I do suggest if you haven't seen the video. Um, it was quite a few weeks ago now. On this. Uh, um, me making the spoon. Go back and watch it. Uh, I'll try to look it up and tell you what it's all about actually. What it's called. But it's under the playlist. If you look. At my name underneath the video you're watching now, it'll say AC's making a player. Click on that, then it'll say videos, playlists, etc. Uh, click on videos or under playlists, it's under kitchen utensils. So, uh, it's under videos, it's a few weeks back. Under kitchen utensils, you'll see wooden spoon uh, making. So, it'll be there on my playlist. If you don't know how to do that, uh, ask somebody how to do that, but that's that's quite. Uh, it's there in a big list So basically like I was saying as I rock it I lower that uh, Once it's finished cut doing the cuts you can feel it cutting and once you feel it so it's not cutting anymore just lower that some more and so forth and then When I'm finished I switch it off and let it stop Let it rock back to the neutral position like that which in my case the way I've mounted this grinder on it, in my case, it, it stays horizontal, which is quite good and quite handy. If you're using a, a Makita or something like that, it might want to touch at the back end like that, because the center of gravity, see how it wants to hang like that? 
Whereas mine, the way I've got it mounted, and you could mount this with a piece of C channel too if you wanted to. However, uh, and this works quite good because it gives me four inches of width. So if I wanted to cut a bigger spoon with one of these bigger discs, I could use that. If you wanted to do a longer, narrower spoon slot, you would have to pivot your angle grinder. Instead of being like that, you'd have to pivot it so it goes like that, backwards and forwards. And it'll make your width narrower. Um, that would work too. But I just wanted it to do standard spoons, not long, elongated ones. So, there you have it. So I just thought I'd zoom in and show you those rollers. And look, if I was to lift that up by hand, you can see here that goes up and down. And it works quite good. And instead of rubbing a big groove like the last one was, uh, the heads of the bolts, these last heads, uh, that's all that was running on the edge. You know? So now you've got the full width of the timber in a roller form running on that, so it's not going to wear that down at all. If these do wear down, it's as simple as making two new ones, or making them out of hardwood. I just thought I'd quickly show you how I set up. So I put a sandal line down the middle of the board that I'm going to make into a spoon. Then I square it over the ends, like this. And on my main jig I have a centre line drawn. See that centre line? That goes right through to under my grinder there. And see where the front of my towers are there? They're actually the slot on mine is... This is something that you guys will have to work out for yourself. Because what I would do is I'd put a centre line all the way through, put a piece of board down, and cut a scoop similar to the size you want to do. And that will give you a mark at the front. Now if you can see right down there, I'll just zoom in, see that mark there? That's the mark I have for where the front of my spoon blank should be. Now, I worked out it because I did a sample cut first, and um, once I've done the sample cut, I knew exactly where it goes. So I put that in there, the board in there like that, and I'll just i have to crank it up a bit just to get, get it in there. <laughs> Hang on. Sorry about that. So what I do is I, I'm trying to work with um, one hand here. I put it in there with the front of my board on that mark. But the end centre line, see how it lines up with the centre line of my jig. And you might have to adjust your bolts on the side, these two bolts on the side or whatever to make it so it's central I can't control it, you'll have to work that out for yourself and then also at the back here I line up the centre mark at the back and then I just simply get a clamp and clamp it down on my workbench like that you know, I'll put a block of wood on it so I don't bruise the handle where the handle's going to go and that's basically how I set it up I do wind my machine up so it's going to clear it. See it's clearing it now before I put it in the piece of timber. You want it so it's clearing it and then you adjust it down. Sorry, then you adjust it down to suit. Alright, thanks for joining me as I did the work on this bowl cutting jig for wooden spoons. Now, I hope that's answered some of the questions that people wanted to know. And I hope you understood the modifications that I did. Like I said, this is not for full-on production line process. This is just for people that want to make a few here and there to give away as gifts or sell a few at a market or whatever. If you wanted to do it better and make it stronger, you could change what I've done. This is just a basic layout line of what I've done and it works well for me. Now... You might have to mount your grinder different to the way I've mounted mine. The way I've mounted mine works fine at the moment. Like I said, if you're using a Makita or one of those others that has the holes in the side, uh, you might have to mount it different, which you would, I believe. Which shouldn't be too hard to do. And it could be actually stronger than what I've done on mine. But it works well, and I hope you like it. So thanks for joining me. If you did like it, please hit that like, thumbs up button, please because that helps the channels. And look, if you've just watched part of it, could you please hit it too? That would be great. 
because that will help people see these videos and get me out there. I'm still trying to establish the channel a bit, and that would be helpful. All right, catch you on the next one. Thanks for that. Bye for now.